Okay. However, you know, um, investing during bear markets is a very difficult task. Okay. On the one hand, you have Warren Buffett saying that we should be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Okay. So is it now time to be greedy? But on the other hand, you have John Maynard Keynes, which said that the market can stay irrational longer. Then you can stay solvent. Okay. I mean, if you look at it, it seems like, you know, our long-term fundamentals are great. So why is the market falling down? So should you go out there and catch a falling knife? Okay. So that's, that's a question. But then again, even though all your fundamentals tell you that the, there's no reason why the market should be trading where it's at, it continues to fall. Okay, so what are the opportunities and risks of this type of market? The opportunity is, of course, for us to make significant gains. This is our opportunity to, to earn a lot of money. Unfortunately, there are also many risks, which is why what seems to be an easy task is not, or what seems to be a great opportunity is not captured by many people. Okay, first of all, um, we encounter steep declines during a bear market. The duration is very long, um, and nobody knows where the bottom will be. Nobody knows when it will happen and how deep it will be. Okay, so our objective, starting this point, is to uh, provide you a strategy that will allow you to capitalize on the opportunity, but manage the risk. So our recommended strategy, first of all, invest only your long-term money, okay? Bear markets take a long time to finish. So at this point, if you're investing in the stock market, uh, make sure that this is money that you will not need for the next two to three years, okay? If you are still invested in the stock market and are wondering whether you should sell or not, I think you have to ask yourself honestly, is this money that you, are, you can afford to sit at for the next two to three years? If you cannot afford um, to, have, to keep that money in the market for the next two to three years, then um, you should um, sell some of your stocks. Okay, second uh, rule is don't use margin. Okay, um, there are some people who have you know, strong convictions about the market and of course are very excited about the opportunity of buying at a cheap level. However, the problem is if you buy stocks using margin, there is a chance that the market could go down first um, and subject you to a margin call. This just means that um, there's a risk that you will be asked to sell your stock, to pay your margin loans in the middle, you know, of the journey and you don't want to do that because you might end up selling at the market low and it will be difficult for you to recover the losses okay and then number three is spread out the buying okay um, if you're used to market timing um, this is not a good time to do market timing it's we advise uh, peso cost averaging at this um, stage of the market. This is because we don't know how low the market can go and how long it will take. So for you to get a better price, it's better for you to spread out your buying. And we recommend for you to do it over 18 months for you to, to improve your average cost. Okay, and set conservative buying prices. Remember that this is a buyer's market and during a buyer's market, um, Usually, we get the price that we want. Okay? There's no need to be aggressive. I know the market is started the rally last Friday, and you know you might think that it's already over, and you might, might start chasing prices up. Um, remember that um, it is a buyer's market, and don't be aggressive buying. So these are just some, um, you know, some studies I'd like to show you about the bear market. Okay, so. What are the magnitude and duration of the different bear markets? The global historical average for the peak to bottom of a bear market is 55.9% or close to 56%. And then it takes around 40 months on the average for a market to drop by 56%. Okay, 
However, the shortest bear market only lasted for five months, it, and it only fell by 22.5%. And the longest and deepest um, bear market fell by 84.8% and lasted for 153 months. So in other words, you know, the message is, it is really difficult to catch the bottom. It can be shallow, it can be deep, it can be short, and it can be long. Okay? Okay, bringing it closer to home, um, you know, we, unfortunately, we only have data points for two bear markets, which is the Asian financial crisis and the global financial crisis. So the Asian financial crisis, our market fell by 71.6%, and the peak to the bottom lasted for 56 months or almost five years. Okay, the global financial crisis was really very quick. It only lasted for 12 months. And the mark, but the market fell by 56%. Okay, so today, um, our from the peak, um, it's already nine months. Okay, and we're already down by 22.6%. Okay, so if you look at it, it depends on which model you look at. I mean, anything is possible. Um, I'm thinking it should be somewhere between global financial crisis and Asian financial crisis because Asian financial crisis, we had um, a lot more problems in the Philippines. We're now much stronger um, than, um, than we were before. As far as the global financial crisis is concerned, I think the reason why it may last longer than the global financial crisis is because during that time, we were quite lucky that China came to the rescue and pump prime their economy. Unfortunately, China right now doesn't want to do it anymore and won't do it. So we don't have, um, you know, who's going to take the place of China at this point. Okay, um, next, we recommend to be defensive. Um, so we recommend buying a basket of more defensive companies. Okay, uh, concentrated bets are not recommended at this point. Okay. And when we talk about defensive companies, we're talking about companies that we think are less vulnerable to economic weakness, okay, and have strong balance sheets. You may also want to consider buying index funds instead, um, because at least it's already a diversified portfolio, okay, and it's less volatile. Or you may want to do a combination of, say, uh, what we call a core satellite strategy, putting bulk of your investments in an index fund, but, you know, if you have a favorite stock pick, you can buy one or two of them. Okay, so our stock picks, um, first gen. So first gen is a power company. Okay, so power is a defensive business. Okay, 93% of revenues are de derived from long-term contract agreements. And although it has U.S. dollar debts, this is hedged. Uh, as its revenues are in U.S. dollars. Um, profits are forecast to grow by 22%, and it's only trading at 10 times PE, and provides a dividend yield of 2.9%. Okay, Ayala Land um, is one of the largest property companies in the country. It has a diversified source of revenues and project locations. Okay, and although the residential business is considered to be cyclical, Around 35% of its earnings before interest and tax comes from the leasing business or from rental income, which is uh, more defensive. And its net debt to equity ratio is uh, very manageable at 0.84 times. Okay. And 85% of the borrowings are already at fixed, have fixed rates, meaning if interest rates go up, they will not be uh, vulnerable to a shock. And it's already trading at a 33% discount to its net asset value. Um, historically, Ayala Land traded at a 25% discount to net asset value. Okay, Mega World, um, it's also one of the largest property companies in the country. And due to its significant expansion during the past few years, uh, it's now no longer a property developer, but it's also one of the biggest landlords with leasing income accounting for 43% of EBIT or earnings before interest and tax. And it has a very conservative balance sheet 
with a net debt to equity ratio of only 0 0.07 times. So almost no debt for uh, Mega World. And it's now trading at almost, you know, a 57.5% discount to its net asset value. So it's already close to one standard deviation below its historical average discount of 59.2%. So when we say one standard deviation below the mean, it just says that um, there is a, based on it, its uh, historical performance, there's an 80%, 84% probability that it will trade at a higher valuation over the long term when conditions normalize. Okay, in terms of PE, it's only trading at nine times PE. And then SM Prime Holdings. So SM Prime is the most defensive property company in the Philippines. So it derives close to 80% of its earnings before tax from rental income. And out of this, a bulk of it, the bulk of it comes from malls. Okay. So since I started working as an analyst to this day, I have never seen a year where the net income of SM Prime has fallen. So it is that defensive. Okay, net debt to equity ratio is only 0.47 times. Okay, the main problem with SM Prime, I think everybody knows that it is a very defensive company, which is why it hasn't gone down a lot. But nevertheless, assuming that it falls below 1890, we should be prepared to take advantage and buy the stock. Okay, so we're adding Robinson's land. Um, after the share price has actually gone down quite a bit. It is also a highly defensive property company in the Philippines, deriving 77% of earnings before interest and tax from rental income, such as malls and offices. And the net debt to equity ratio is also very conservative of, at 0.38 times. Okay, It's already trading at a 33.8% discount to its net asset value. Okay. We're also adding some consumer companies. We're adding DNL back to the list. Uh, we are very excited after this company has um, corrected quite a bit from its high. Okay, DNL is a very defensive property company as most of its products are sold to manufacturers of non-discretionary consumer goods, meaning, you know, most of them are food items, um, items that you will most likely continue to buy even during a market even during a weak economic condition. Um, and, of course, we like the fact that it's focused on specialized products, which minimizes the threat of competition and improves its ability to pass on higher costs. Okay, net debt to equity ratio is very conservative, at 0.24 times, and its interest cover is 28 times, giving it a very um, safe room. Okay. To maneuver, and it's currently trading at 18.7 times 2016 PE. This is below the consumer sector average of 23.5 times. Okay, and finally, we're adding Century Pacific (CNPF). Um, it's uh, Century Pacific is the manufacturers and owners of Century Tuna, Argentina Corn Beef. So these are the market leaders in tuna and Corned beef, and these are defensive businesses um, that are not as vulnerable to um, economic conditions. And um, one of the reasons why we decided to include Century Tuna is we are quite confident that earnings will grow by 25, by a compounded annual growth rate of 25% the next two years because of the recently announced acquisition of the um, coconut outsourcing business of the parent company, okay, which already has contracts uh, to produce coconut water, coconut flour, coconut oil for um, customers in other countries. Okay, net debt to equity ratio is very minimal, so almost the net cash position and even a higher interest, interest cover ratio. And it's trading at only 12.7 times PE, well below the consumer sector average of 23 and a half. So it's like half the valuation of other um, consumer companies. And this is despite its above average growth outlook. So this is the summary of our stock picks and our buy prices and high conviction buy prices. So one of the questions um, I received when I came out with a, an additional column on the high conviction buy prices is what's the difference? 
Um, high con for us, a high conviction buy price is a level where we think that, you know, it's quite rare. It's quite a rare condition for us to see these stocks trade at such levels of valuations. So if, you know, such conditions happen, we think a little bit more aggressiveness is warranted for investors. Assuming that, um, you know, when a stock is trading at the buy below price or below your buy below price, maybe you allocate one month. But when it's trading at the high conviction buy price, you can be more aggressive. Maybe you can buy 1.5 times your usual buy order, you know, to take advantage of it because these are rare opportunities for us. So just a few words of, um, you know, um, advice. Uh, if you buy property companies, please don't buy all four. Um, you can limit um, your purchase to, say, two of them. Or maybe as a whole basket, you may, you know, choose to buy a smaller amount per property company so as not to have a super concentrated bet on properties. Okay, and for stock like CNPF, although we really like it, one of our major issues is that it is not as liquid. So it's not traded actively, and it might be one of the reasons why it's only trading at 13 times PE. So in that respect, please do not, you know, concentrate your bet on it. Maybe um, a 5% exposure to the stock is good enough. Okay, and earlier on, we talked about um, index funds. So I'm quite excited to tell you that um, um, you can now buy index funds in COL Financial. Okay, and uh, of course, I think one of the challenges is, um, you know, we talk about the market, that we should buy it at levels below 6.4 and be excited when it's trading below 5.6. But then again, of course, the price of the index fund is not 5.6 and 6.4. So we did a computation on the buy below price and our high conviction buy prices for the index funds so that at least you know um, where you should be buying at. Okay, and lastly, um, it's going to be a tough battle because, you know, I think you will be seeing uh, your portfolio in the red for the next, if this is a bear market, it's normal for you to see red in the next few years and be mentally prepared to see your portfolio in the red. But then again, okay, I mean, you know, um, this is my second to the last slide and this is very important because I'd like to share with you why you should stay invested even during these difficult times. Okay. So this is the difference of return of a portfolio that stays invested and those that miss the best trading days. Okay. This is over a span of 20 years in the U.S. If you just stay the course, you would get an annual return of 9.2%. But assuming that you're scared and you just stayed out, and you only missed 10 best trading days of, of the past 20 years. Uh, this is 20 years, 10 best trading days, which is not a lot. Your return already declines by 4% per annum. Okay? If you miss 30 best days, it's down to 0.90%. Um, okay? And if you miss, you know, sometimes when the market recovers, since you're out of the market, you know, you, you, you don't really think about it. And when you come back, you know, um, you've missed a lot of days. Your, you know, ability to recoup your losses diminishes significantly. You might actually lose money um, and, and so forth. Okay. And in closing, I'd like to share with you um, what uh, Peter Lynch has shared. He's one of the best fund managers. Okay. Uh, with significant returns in the uh, stock market. So he said that I've found that when the market's going down and you buy funds wisely, at some point in the future, you will be happy. You won't get there by reading now is the time to buy. Okay, so with that, um, I'd like to end my presentation. Um, thank you very much. So uh, just to announce that COL Financial is available in social media, so please follow us and like us. Thank you very much.